Hi everyone, welcome to the second tutoring video on objects and classes in C++ for the Baylor Tutoring Department. In this video, we will learn about creating classes in a C++ project, making constructors, instantiating objects, and a little bit about the this pointer. So let's walk through the program I've created for this example. You will notice that I have three code files in this C++ project. Of course, we have main.cpp, which contains the main function that acts as the driver for the program, as always. And in this project, I have a person class that I've written. You will notice that this is split between person.h and person.cpp. This is important to note. Person.h is what we call a header file, which contains the declaration of the class, its attributes, and its methods, but no implementation. You'll see that I've declared class person here with three public attributes, one constructor, and one method to celebrate the person's birthday. So let's take a look at person.cpp for the implementations of these two functions. In person.cpp, you'll first notice the constructor. This is a method that, I, that is specifically used and called at the time of instantiation for an object of this class. When I create a new person object to use, I pass an age, an SSN, and a name so that the constructor can set these attributes right away. In the function, you will notice the use of the this pointer. You will learn more about this in future classes, but for now, note that the this pointer is used to access attributes and methods of the object that these methods are called upon. The this pointer literally allows us to access this object that was used to call the method. So in the constructor, we are setting this person's objects, this person object's age, SSN, and name to the passed in arguments of the same name. A key note here is that this arrow age refers to this object's age, and age alone refers to the variable of the same name that was passed in. It is always a best practice to access an object's attributes in its methods with this to remove ambiguity and increase readability. In the celebrate birthday function, we increment this person's age, then print their name and new age to the OStream passed in. Note that when working in the .cpp implementation file for a corresponding .h file, we need to pound include the header file that we are writing implementation for. It is a best practice to only pound include header files and not pound include .cpp implementation files, as this helps keep our dependency tree cleaner and free of cycles, something that you will also learn about later. Finally, note that when implementing any of the person class's methods, we need to prepend the name of the method with person colon colon. The colon colon is called the scope resolution operator. This allows us to write the function definition for these class methods and essentially associate or attach them to the person class so that the compiler knows that these are the definitions of the person class's methods. So next, let's look at main.cpp. In main, first notice again that I pound include the person header file and not the implementation file. I instantiate a person object on line nine by making a call to its constructor with initial values for this person's attributes. Then I print their name and age, celebrate John Miller's birthday and exit. So let's run that to check this out. So first John Miller is 25 years old. Then we call celebrate birthday which prints this to the console. Now, John Miller is 26 years old because their age has been incremented in that function. So that wraps up this first video on classes, but stay tuned for the next video where we'll continue this example by adding a bit more complexity. We will learn about having multiple constructors and finally more about how different access levels such as public and private work. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter which computer science course you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring you may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thanks!